Hello everyone, my name is Ashan Jolly, also known as the Jolly Legend, and welcome to this video where I'll be going over my first impressions and demonstration of the Beacon Studio audio interface. And so far, this is my new king of streaming devices. Right, so here is um, the overview of the settings, which I think is the best processing I have seen on any device. Like, I have my Neumann MT48, which is a... Let's just Google how expensive this is. Um, which is, um, yeah. This much. I think I bought mine about a year ago for £1,500. Yeah, which um, which is very, very good for, like, raw, like, voice acting, mu mu music production. Like, the hardware in that is amazing, right? This processing, however, has been the bane of my existence. I've been trying so hard to get, like, a good sound out of this processing for live streaming. It's been so rough. And it's like the GoXLR was, like, really good, right? Like, much better than the Rodecaster. Much better than most devices. The, the GoXLR was great. But this... This is better. Like, this is better. 100% better. Like, oh my god. It is so good. So good. But right, you've been hearing my audio, like, processed, right? But I'll go over what I've done. Um, so I just went straight with this, like, low broadcast voice preset. Like, I mean, there's no EQ applied, but there is DSing, bass enhancement, and exciting. But I feel like this low broadcast voice just kind of works for me. So, I, I think it works. Like, it's got a presence peak, presence boost. It's got a cut in this, like, sort of mid-range reason, region. On the GoXLR, my mid-range cut would look more like this. But, I mean, um, this sounds pretty good in my ears as well, but it seems to make the bass stand out a lot. Whereas, this just kind of um, seems a little more natural. So, you know, it seems to work pretty good, and it's got a peak around here-ish. Which seems to be targeting, um, well... The the kind of first harmonic in my voice. Like, this here is my fundamental... This is really cool, by the way. You can see the frequencies in real time. So this this one you see here is the fundamental frequency. So when I start speaking low and down in my really low register, you start seeing around the 70, 80 hertz, uh, 70 to 90 hertz region. Start peaking up here. So this is um, the... ba 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 the fundamental frequency of your voice. And, um, so that's where I like having this bass enhanced. Like, number two seems to be working this, like, sort of, uh, fundamental frequency region, which is nice. Like, I can turn this off and just have, like, a clean bass-free sound, but I like this slight boost in the bass, just adding a little bit of extra rumble in the voice. I think that sounds really cool. And then, by default, it comes with a low... a bass roll-off at 40 hertz. And it seems to have minus two gain? But I don't know if that changes much. Like, does this actually change anything? No. Okay. Right. So, yeah. Maybe it's just so it looks pretty, so it sits on the line. <laughs> Maybe that's why the preset is sad that way, but... Yeah, 40 hertz is a pretty fine, um... Um... Frequency to roll off the bass at. And then without the bass roll off, you can just kind of hear some of that, uh... Lower frequency come back in, which, I mean, with the bass enhancer... Maybe is a little too much bass. So I think it's nice. It counteracts. It adds some of that warmth just under my fundamental frequency. And then it just takes out that lower end rumble. And yeah, this excite is pretty cool as well. It just adds some nice uh, brightness in the in the upper range. Because that's another thing that's frustrating by the Neumann. Like, uh, the EQ is great, right? But just adding a flat boost in the air region is like... Eh... It's not as cool, like an exciter. When I'm working with a darker mic like this one, the DPA 2017, amazing microphone. But coming from my Sennheiser 416, which is a brighter microphone, it's like trying to get that sound with EQ. It's, it's difficult. It doesn't work as well as an exciter does, because the exciter is a bit more dynamic and adds frequencies and fun ways. I don't know ex exactly how it works, but it's cool. But you can still get the EQ and all that. Like that way. And this noise suppression and expansion is moi, chef's kiss. Main issue I, the main issue I had with this Neumann 
attempt to reconnect. That's just the web app. It's not a huge deal. Um, is these dynamics. It's just a gate. So you could hear, like, the noise come in when you start speaking and the noise cut out. When you stop speaking, it goes dead silent, then the back hum, background hum. So I turn this off and, like, this is the background noise I'm dealing with. So I've got PC fan. Windows are open because it's summer and it's warm, like you'll hear outdoor ambiance. There was builders working 10 minutes ago, um, that kind of stuff. So just like a low amount of noise suppression. I'm just going to set this to the same number because it's satisfying. Just a low amount of noise suppression works well just to kind of take care of that. And then an expander at a low threshold, like minus 60, just makes it so everything below that threshold just gets quieted down enough. Compared to a noise gate, which just shuts it off and silences it. And this makes like a really nice sort of natural sound, which is still quiet when I stop speaking. Like, it's so nice. Because having the noise gate in my ears, it's so jarring going from like silence to then speaking with a very small like hum or fan in the background. Compared to this, which is just whew, quiet. But like when I start speaking, it's natural and sounds clean and I love it so much. And the compressor, so much better than the Neumann's. So good. Um, it's on par with the GoX Last compressor. They're both great. Compression amount 100, that's pretty wild. Um, how does this compare? 50% compression, 100% compression. Seems similar in my ears. So this is the simple compressor. And this is the advanced compressor. Um, Okay, so now you can just set like an attack and release. So how I had it on the GoXLR was like this. Well, I think GoXLR for me was minus 16 and 12. That's how I saw my GoXLR for a very bright, punchy sound, but now it's clipping an OBS. And I think that's fine. Like, I mean, uh, minus 20 and 10 still sounds pretty great. Honestly, the, sing the simple works well for me. I think it'll work well for you guys as well. Just, if you want my, like, nice, loud, punchy sound, minus 20 threshold, simple compression amount 100, make it gain 10 dB. So I just get you, you kind of want to make it so, like, when you're speaking nice and softly, it's compressing a little bit, so, like, minus 3 decibels. And then when you're, like, nice and animated and aggressive and boom, bow, then it starts peaking up to, to minus 10. So that's how you get your mic set up. So when you're speaking normally, you're just in the middle, and then you start peaking and going loud. But I think this microphone, this preamp has like, um, 32 bit or something, so it's doing something. So that it doesn't clip in this, which is really nice. Which is, ugh, I'm just, I'm loving this processing so much. And then headphones. I'm using these, uh, new IEMs I just got today, these Sennheiser IE 100 Pros. They sound pretty good to me, like, I've been using these Apple headphones. Just because I bought these nice Hi-Fi Man headphones, but they're heavy and they're uncomfortable. And they're so big, like when I'm streaming, I want my face to look a bit sleeker. So these Apple headphones have been what I've been wearing. <laughs> and they just don't have much treble. So these are nice. Because they've also these Moondrop Arias, but they are so uncomfortable. And these are like... They're a lot more comfortable than the Moondrops, but... Not as comfortable as these, uh, on the, as the Apple ones. But it's cool, I can add some bass in, I can add some treble in. I can scoop the mids if I want this, like... Super crazy sound in my in-ear monitors. I can go for it. And then, like, I've been listening to this, ugh, Exhibition 33, moi. I just got to the end of Act 1, and damn. With this song. Okay, this is way too basic. <laughs> and it's cool, I can type in the... Oh, God. Type in the EQ. I don't, you guys, you guys can't hear the, how it's changing for me, but, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that's awesome. You guys can't hear this, but wow. <sighs> that's so cool. Like, it's not adding too much bass to my voice, but like the bass in the music. For like these headphones, um... Where it sound like very sort of clean bass-wise. Oh my god, that's awesome! Okay, I'm gonna turn that off for now, just for the clean sound, but wow, I love this! 
I really hope this isn't copyrighted. <laughs> Just taking out the, um, <laughs> this video. I hope, I hope it's not copyrighted, but hey, okay. Even if it is, they can have the revenue, I don't mind too much. I don't make very much off this. As long as they don't take the video down. But, um, yeah, so this is the microphone. This is the, D uh, the Beacon mic. The Beacon mix. The Beacon studio. With the DPA 2017 microphone. And now, just for a quick comparison, um, I'll have my Neumann MT48, uh, just for a sound comparison. So right now, I'll switch to raw audio, and then normalize it so it's a balanced volume. Okay, so now we have raw audio going through the Beacon Studio 1, and this is how it sounds like the noise floor. Sounds like that, and my voice sounds like this. And the microphone sounds pretty clean and good, and I think it sounds pretty great. And now let's switch over to the Neumann MT48, which is a 1,500-pound audio interface, compared to this, which is a 250-pound audio interface. So right, let's go and do that. Okay, check, check. So right now, um, I am speaking through the Neumann MT48 audio interface. Very expensive, very high quality, and um, this is how that sounds like. Completely raw, because I will I will not fault this device for its raw audio. It sounds amazing. It's just its processing is like really lacking for me. But hey, this is how the microphone sounds like. Completely raw through this audio interface. And then let's just um I guess we'll show the processing I do. So yes, this is the processing I do with the microphone, and I'll try and balance oh wait, that's not going through the audio interface. One second. Okay, and now <laughs> We have the process sound. So right now, this is um, the compression I'm doing. And if I start getting loud, it starts... It's just like... Hmm. A little difficult with that. And now uh, this is some EQ that I've done. Um, low cut and... We can compare this to a... We can have a low peak to mimic the sort of bass enhancer. And then do the low cut on the preamp itself. And we get this sound. Um, this is the kind of EQ I've managed to get with this Neumann audio interface, and I can't get it to sound anywhere near as loud compression-wise. In OBS, I had like a loud max plugin, and then make that louder. But that's like an extra plugin that I can't hear in my ears, I can't hear how that sounds, I can't hear the balance. So this Beacon audio interface is so nice for streaming. So yeah, this is the, the Neumann's processed audio. And let's go back to the Beacon mic. And there we go, now we have... The Beacon Mic. The Beacon Studio. Back in play. So there you guys go. Hope this video helped you guys out and uh, you understand how awesome this um, audio interface is. It's tiny. It, um, it's power over USB. Like, it's, it's just good. And now it's got this whole like processing suite, which is a little frustrating because I bought the stream deck with the knobs on it to control wavelength for my Neumann interface so I could stream with that and still have the mixing capabilities and this is like actually better than wavelength or it's at least the same as wavelength if not it's just it's the same thing but we got a VOD track which is really cool I'm sure you can do the same thing with wavelength but with my Neumann I, it's very complicated the setup I had where it would go into, like, all my audio would go into Wavelink and then go into the Neumann, and then the Neumann would go to OBS with everything, so I couldn't have a VOD track that way. And the Wavelink would add in latency. So if I'd sing along to a song, then the song would be in a different place in my voice, and that was very irritating. Whereas this is all done together in this mixing suite, so it's all good, and the, there will be no latency, so yes, it is better. Now, the only problem is, I had a Stream Deck before, and now I have two Stream Decks. My first Stream Deck doesn't get used, and now I want to get the Beacon Mix Create. <laughs> so then I'll have two stream decks and a Mix Create and just so much stuff I bought. <laughs> oh man, amazing. But right, this Beacon Studio audio interface is so good. I wanted to buy it actually before um, I bought the Neumann because I was like, okay, I've heard bad things about the preamp on this. And I mean, you've heard the raw comparison. I will say, when I first plugged this in, there was this, like, really, like, kind of loud buzzing sound, but that's gone away now. So I think the thing just had to warm up a bit? I'm not too sure. 
I did buy mine off eBay, so who knows? But from what I well, from how it works now, it seems really good. And um, those who want to like do a deep dive into how the raw audio sounds of both ones, then you can kind of hear the difference between like a streamer grade and a professional grade. Because the professional grade is going to be better. Like I mean, yeah, but how much better? And the cool thing is, I can route this mic into the Neumann, use the Neumann preamps, and then route out of the Neumann into the beacon. So I can still use a Neumann quality. And if I want to record voice acting, I can just go into Adobe Audition and select the Neumann track. But for OBS and everything, I can route that into the beacon. Ah, so good. Which is what I might do, because now I have both in both devices. Unless I sell my Neumann, which I don't know if I'm going to do. Just yet. But right. Hope this video helped you guys out. See you all next time, and goodbye.